Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk about 10 things that are going to help you stop being so undisciplined with money and get some discipline in your life in terms of habits when it comes to money. And if you can avoid these 10 things that I'm going to mention on this video, your money is going to be much better and you're going to be better able to handle your money. And hopefully these will help you not make the mistakes that you've made in the past and help you be more discipline so you can control your money better instead of having your money control you. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing is this. What happens with a lot of people is every time their income goes up, their spending goes up. Every time they make more money, they have to spend more money, right? So if you get a raise or over the next year or something at your job, you all of a sudden see the expense side of your budget go up because now you say, you know what? Now I got extra money. I'm going to do this because I wasn't doing that before. Now, what happens with this, guys, and the reason you want to avoid it is because if your income goes up and your spending goes up, guess what? You're right back to where you started. You don't have any additional money. You, don't, you can't have extra money to save, extra money to pay on debt, extra money to put towards your emergency savings, right? Or, or you don't have that money when every time you make more money, you spend more money. So you have to avoid that. How do you avoid it? You have to intentionally say, okay, I am going to keep my expenses the same. Now we know that there's inflation, cost of living goes up automatically. You, don't, you can't do anything about that. I get that. But every time you get a raise or you make more money, please keep your expenses about the same. Because ultimately, you want to build that cushion of money up that you have extra every single month so that now you can spend that money getting out of debt or spend that money investing or spend that money on making sure you have more money in your emergency fund in case in case something goes wrong. And you gotta be disciplined, because that's hard to do. Because automatically, every time we make more money, we're gonna feel like, hey, we got more money, let's do more stuff. Try to, per try to be purposeful and intentional about keeping your expenses the same, even when you make more money. Now, the second mistake that keeps a lot of people undisciplined with their money is that they just save money. They don't really invest money. So what happens with this one is the fact that you get money and you save it under a mattress or you save it in an account at the local bank where you're getting 0.0005% interest and you're saving a bunch of money, but you're not investing a bunch of money. You're not putting compound interest to work. You're not making the money make more money. Instead, you're putting the money under a mattress, basically, by putting it in a local savings account. And now you got fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars in your savings account, but your monthly expenses are only about three or four thousand, and you really only need about fifteen or twenty thousand dollars for your emergency fund. But instead, you got sixty and seventy thousand dollars in your savings. The mistake that a lot of people make is that they are fearful or scared to put their money in the stock market or invest their money in a potential asset that's going up in value. So you have to get away from that undisciplined idea that saving in a savings account or under a mattress or in a safe in the corner of your house is just as good as actually investing it in the stock market or investing it in real estate. That's a mistake that a lot of people make that they need to avoid. Now, the third mistake that you gotta stop doing to stop being undisciplined with your money is not investing enough money, right? A lot of people do this, okay? You have to avoid it. A lot of people say, oh, I'm investing, I'm putting 3% of my salary and I'm getting the match at my job. Listen, that's just 3%. That's better than nothing, but you gotta do better than that. You gotta do more than that. You gotta increase your investing percentages. Right? If it's just 4 or 5%, if you're trying to get out of debt, I get it. But if you're out of debt, you've got your emergency money, now you need to up that investment amount that you're actually investing in assets. you got to raise that thing up. A lot of people invest, but a lot of people don't invest enough. They're just not stretching themselves and sacrificing enough and having enough money at the end of the rainbow when it's all said and done and you're 55, 60 years old and you want to retire, well, you've only been putting 2 or 3% towards your retirement all these years and you don't have what you think you should have. Part of that is because a lot of people just don't have the discipline to invest 10%, 12%, 
15, 20% of their money towards their retirement or towards their investments in general. Guys, if you get value from this video, please smash the like button below. And also don't forget to share this video with your friends and your family. So number four is this. Some people have plenty of money invested, but they don't have any emergency money. So they forgot about this whole concept of having money just in case. Instead, they've got $100,000 invested in the stock market, but they only got $2,000 in cash in case there's an emergency, right? You have to avoid that, right? In order to get good with money, be better with money, you gotta have that strong financial foundation. And the strong financial foundation is having money aside in case something goes wrong. It's good to have investments, but it's not good to have so much investments and no money in cash or no money you can get to immediately, quickly, in case you have an immediate emergency. Look, bad stuff is going to happen. Things are going to happen. Listen, you're going to need $1,000 one day. You're going to need $2,000 one day. So you've got to be disciplined enough to say, I'm going to save up enough money to have when something goes wrong. Look, you may be watching this and you don't have any money saved for emergencies, but you got thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in investment somewhere. You would be wise to go ahead and take some of that money and have it available for liquidity purposes in case you come up on an emergency. If the last thing you want to do is be going down to the strip mall at the payday loan place, getting a payday loan, but you got $100,000 sitting in the, in the stock market somewhere. Or having a 401k with forty dollars and $50,000 in it, but you need $10,000, so you got to borrow the money from the 401k, right? You don't want to do that. You don't want to borrow money that you're trying to invest and grow for your future. Avoid the undisciplined mistake of having a bunch of money invested, and having no money for emergencies. Now, number five is this. A lot of people invest, but they still carry bad debt. So there's a lot of people who have car payments, who have credit card debt, who have student loan debt, but they're out investing a whole bunch of money. Look, if you have $100,000 invested in the stock market, but you owe $150,000 in bad debt, debt on things going down in value, then you really don't have $100,000 invested in the stock market. It's basically a negative $50,000 net loss. So a lot of people, they have the discipline to invest, but they don't have the discipline to pay off debt. And you gotta avoid this big mistake that a lot of people make. Now, another undisciplined mistake that a lot of people make is they wanna go get a side hustle. They wanna go get side income. They wanna go get a, a side gig, right? They wanna make more money. But at the same time, they don't manage the money that they already have well. So what ends up happening to a lot of people is they go out and get that second job or they go out and, and build that side hustle, but then they come back and because they're not managing their household finances well, they end up taking this new money and putting it towards and on bad habits. So you wanna be very, very disciplined with the money that you have, that you have right now. Before you go get the side hustle, the side income, the side gig, the big time business, right? Because if you get the great business that's making $200,000 in revenue, then guess what? If, you're, if you can't manage your household finances well, then you go get the $200,000 revenue business that's doing great, but how are you going to be able to manage that? right? How are you going to be able to manage that business and all of the things it's necessary to manage with that business? LLC, S-Core, C-Core, no matter what you start. Still, if you can't manage home, it's going to be hard for you to manage business. And some people want that more money, but ultimately that more money is going to be going on top of bad money habits. So here's the kicker. Here's how you avoid that and you fix that. You work on managing very well what you already have. Then when you become a good manager, good steward over your current personal finances. Then when you go out and get that side gig and make $20 an hour, $50 an hour, or you make that, or you get that side business, now you know how to properly manage that money. Because if you're undisciplined at home, new money ain't gonna really help you. You're just putting new money on top of bad money habits. Now the seventh thing that many people could stand to be more disciplined about is credit. Now credit, is good because credit can help you buy appreciating assets like say a home or you know some type of real estate right but be careful about putting credit on a pedestal right some people think that my life would be wonderful if i could just have good credit 
But the problem again is sometimes there's a lot of people that want to fix their credit, but they don't want to fix the behavior that led to the bad credit in the first place. So people want to get out there and have good credit. I want to get my 800 credit score. My FICO is going to be high and everything's going to be wonderful and great. Not necessarily, because if you fix the credit, but you fail to fix the behavior, you haven't done anything because ultimately you'll go right back into problems and issues with your credit if you don't focus and put some intention on getting better with your behavior with money. See, if your behavior doesn't change, ultimately good credit is going to turn to bad credit. Sometimes that just doesn't fix it for people, right? They still have these poor money habits and poor money behaviors. So my thing is, let's spend a little less time working on building the credit and let's spend a little more time on building the behavior that led to the bad credit in the first place. Now, the eighth undisciplined thing that people need to do since we're talking about credit is using credit cards and not paying the credit card off in full as soon as possible, immediately. See, a lot of people will tell you, hey, I, I use my credit card for everything, but I always pay it off all the way, all the time. I pay it off in time before it's due and I don't accrue any interest that I have to pay. So I do that all the time. Listen, a lot of people say that, but I've found that most people don't really do that. See, the average American household has about a little over $8,000 in credit card debt. And credit card debt, I think, is well over a trillion dollars, maybe closer to two trillion dollars by now, total for the Ameri for Americans. So the point is that people say that they pay off their credit card immediately, their balance all the time, but they really don't. So that's an undisciplined behavior that you got to get out of. And it's a result of being undisciplined with money. There's a lot of people that use their credit card for emergencies, right? If something goes wrong, they don't have $10,000 laying around, but they got this credit card that they keep for emergencies. You gotta be careful with that, right? That's an undisciplined money habit that you wanna avoid, using your credit card for emergencies. Instead, have emergency money and use your credit card sparingly, hopefully, but if you do use it for all of your purchases because you want the points back, then that's okay as long as you pay it off immediately and you don't carry a balance month to month because carrying a credit card balance month to month is a bad habit, right? It's an undisciplined habit. Now, the ninth thing is this. There's a lot of people out there in America and all over the world that go on vacations and don't really have money. They go on vacations and they don't have any emergency money saved up. They go on vacation and they don't have any real investments and and assets that are growing in value, or they go on vacation and bills are due, or they go on vacation and they're not investing enough money. See, a lot of people want to live their best life today, and they forget that there's a life in 10 years. There's a life in 20 years as well. So you don't want to be sacrificing fun and excitement today for the rent tomorrow, or for food tomorrow or for your light bills and electric bills and the gas for your car to get around in 20 years. So just be careful. I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm not saying you can't enjoy a nice vacation. I'm saying do it responsibly, right? In other words, save up the money, have all of your ducks in a row, have your firm financial foundation together, and then go as have, have as much fun as you want. But don't be the person that's on vacation broke and on vacation and have no savings, and on vacation and not investing anything, or on vacation and have a whole bunch of debt on things going down in value, bad debt. Prioritize building the strong foundation, and don't put experiences today over your well-being tomorrow. Speaking of that, number 10 is just simply, there's a lot of people that are undisciplined in the area of living for today and not planning for their future. No life insurance outside of the job. No estate plan, no will, no goals, no vision for the future financially. Just kind of living for today. Don't see a future beyond six months from now. Just out here, just winging it with money. Look, when you wing it with money, money's going to wing it with you. You got to be intentional with what you're doing with money. You have to be intentional about what's going to happen in five years and 10 years. Now listen, for some people, it may not get here, right? For some people, there may be a whole bunch of things in the way be between here and five and 10 years from now. But for a lot of us, 
we're going to be here. And so if we're going to be here, why not go ahead and make sure that we got some money down the road? We got some, some ways to take care of ourselves down the road so we're not relying on children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews and, and everybody else to take care of us besides us. That's how to stop being undisciplined with your money. If you could just avoid those 10 bad habits, your money is going to be good and you're going to be better with your money. You're going to feel more in control of your money. You're going to see your money growing. You're going to see your money working for you and doing the things for you that you want it to do. You telling your money what to do instead of your money telling you what to do. Hey, I hope this quick video was helpful. Check out this video right here to see what to do after you have your initial $2,000 saved up. And check out this video right here to see exactly what you should be doing before you jump into investing with both feet. Hit that like button for me and please share this video. Peace.